Hello everyone and welcome to another Rise of Kingdoms video. This is Dragothian here and today I wanted to talk to you about KVK roles and really more specifically just war in general. PvP, player versus player, city versus city, alliance versus alliance, kingdom versus kingdom, the whole shebang. I wanted to, to talk about what role should you play when you are fighting another alliance, another kingdom, another player, and more importantly, why? why? The why behind the what? Why am I saying what I'm about to say? Uh, and I think this is a, a, a video that's been asked for, for for quite a while, and more importantly, it's really necessary for you to stay in your role. Uh, and, and I'm gonna kinda go over each role and each tier and why my, my decision has been to go that route. And you know, certainly feel free to comment below on if you agree, you disagree, but from a high level perspective, being an alliance leader, being a kingdom leader, uh, and then being a more powerful player, I, I feel like I've got some insight into why, um, you know, tier four should do this, tier five should do this, tier three should do this, farmers should do this. So, I mean, that's that's what I wanna go over. I want, I wanna tell you, or at least recommend to you, um, what role you should play to be most effective uh, in these situations, in KVK, in Osiris League, in just PvP in general, open field, in, um, again, in an alliance versus alliance war, in your own kingdom, you know, whatever situation you're in, you should be able to use these tactics, these roles, to be the most effective that you can possibly be in the game, alongside of your brethren, uh, in your alliance or in your kingdom. So. Let's get started with the top. I wanna to work top down because really, at the end of the day, I think there is so much more value to the folks that aren't necessarily T5. Having T5 is a thing where it's really nice to have and you, you have the most powerful troops in the game, so that's a thing, right? But more importantly, um, you are gonna be relied upon to be the rally leader. You're gonna be relied upon to be the front line in open field fights. Um, that's gonna be your role. So as a T5 player, you need to be the one that is out front doing the battling nonstop and really kind of shielding and protecting um, the rest of your kingdom, the rest of your alliance. That's, that's the way it should be. The reason I say that is because you have the most effective troops on the field, not just from a T5 perspective, but the most important thing, guys, is this stuff. All these buffs. All the military, not the economic, because that's, you know, who cares? But the military buffs are a huge, huge deal. And then when you go over to your academy, all of these buffs lead into that. That means you've got the most effective troops on the battlefield from a raw standpoint. Now, T5s differ. <laughs> there are certain T5s that are really, really good. And there are certain T5s that just kind of throw their troops at things. And there's a difference in that, too. But from a role perspective, because you've got combined arms to 10, encampment to 10, medical corps to 10, you've got all of your combat tactics, defensive formation, herbal medicine to 10, you've got cartography to 10 for march speed, you've got all of your different woot steel and your upgraded infantry, uh, archers, cav, and siege uh, maxed out, this is why you need to be on the front line because you will be able to absorb and do more damage than your T4 brothers and sisters because you just have more stats. You've got more attack, more defense, more health, more march speed. You should be in the front, okay? So as a T5 player, your responsibility not only on the battlefield but just in general is to be the go-to person when battle goes down. And um, for those of you that know me, <laughs> I'm usually the first one in, the last one out, alongside of Mika, alongside Ronnie, alongside Jesse, alongside everybody else. So um, all kinds of folks from a T5 perspective, like uh, Sax, like Iceox, like um, Kong Center, like Master Thrall, all in our alliance. And there's more, guys. I, I can't remember all of them. It's literally uh, 6.30 in the morning, but I felt like making a video. Um, there's That's your role. And the reason for a big a big part of our success in K16 has been that the, the T5 players have really owned that role and been the ones that have been on the most. So that when there is fights to be had, we've got 
ralliers. We've got flag defenders. We've got all of that because not only do we have the best troops, but a lot of times that goes hand in hand with having the best commanders. So when you go into your commander screen, you've got a lot of legendaries maxed out level 60, max skill. Most of your epics, if not all, should be done already. A lot of other non-60 maxed out legendaries as well. Those are what make the difference in defensing, uh, flat, uh, defending flags, defending passes, defending positions on the field, open field, um, and then also pushing. So doing the rallies, doing uh, open field pushes where you need to be in front. T5, that is your role. If you're not doing that, it's not to say that you're not being a contributor. It's just you're not being the most effective. You in the back can sure let the T4 go in and kind of meat shield you. Uh, I think that's the wrong way to do it, but I've seen it happen. And it's unfortunate because when you just let your, 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 your alliance mates and your colleagues and your, your comrades go up there and get smashed against other T5 that are up front for your uh, opposing side, yeah, you can probably go in and kind of clean, clean shop with the other T5 because they're not full health at that point. But if you're advancing on an enemy position, they can just refresh their troops and then you're at a disadvantage because not only do you not have full uh, armies, but more importantly, you don't have any of your brothers and sisters helping you out. So that's my recommendation and really that should be pretty cut and dry. T5 should be at the front. Anybody with high tech, especially t with T5 on top of it, uh, you should be at the front. You should be rallying. You should be the garrison commanders. You should be the first and foremost on any objective that you're doing in this game from a battle standpoint. Okay, I wanted to get that one out of the way because, it, again, it should be pretty clear. Some folks follow that, I've seen, and then other folks, not so much. So maybe that advice will help uh, them out. So let's move down to tier four. Um, tier four fighters. So not necessarily just because you have T4, this is your role, but if you are a fighter, you've got a, a good set of commanders that are in the game, uh, maxed out, level 60, max skills, and you've got a good chunk of T4, and I would say a good chunk is anything above one and a half million T4 uh, before KVK, obviously. If you've lost troops, you've lost troops during battles and stuff. I get that. I can certainly get that if you look at my <laughs> power. Um, one and a half million of infantry archers and cav, not including siege. That is a maxed out T4 fighter. And usually those are gonna be sitting around mid uh, high 30s to low 40s is usually the, the threshold of having a, a, a solid T4 fighter with enough troops to battle, but more importantly, enough research. Because again, those T4 generally are more than likely gonna have nine out of 10 on this tree here in the military tech tree. Um, usually seven to 10 on most of these, if not all of them. And then uh, same thing with this, usually nine out of 10 on the medical core combined arm and encampment. You do lose some stats because you get, I believe, I wanna say it's either seven or 10% on the number 10 stat. So if you go from nine to 10, I think you gain like seven or 10% of attack, defense and health. So that's, that's critical, it's a big jump. That's a huge jump. It may even be more than that, to be honest with you, now that I'm thinking about it. But that being said, T4 fighter, your role, support. So you need to be, whenever we're talking, we were just talking about T5, they're going to be on the front. You need to be right behind them picking out strategic targets. So with T5, especially the way I play it, um, I'll either run a full infantry group, and that's to buff debuff, be super tanky, and tank a lot of damage so that the folks behind me, whether they're T4, T5, whatever, are able to come in and start to strategically take out targets. So if you see a YSG, if you see an Edward, if you see a Genghis, if you see a Minna, if you see any type of nuker that's not tank-based, so not Alex, that's, that is a target, that's a primary target, but not the, the most primary. Your nukers are going to be your strategic targets that you want to take out, especially your AOE nukers. So again, YSG, um, Sun Tzu is a good one to take out, Baybars, Minamoto, Genghis. Those are your high damage output armies that you want to take out as quickly as possible so all that nuke damage doesn't have as much time to take effect on the battlefield. So your role, again, from a support T4 fighter standpoint is to, in the open field, 
be that support strategic assassination of armies so that the frontline T5 can continue to push forward and tank and soak some of that damage coming in so that you can come in and take care of those objectives. From a rally standpoint, you are a primary and most critical component to help fill rallies and help fill flags for, for garrisoning. So you need to fill the rallies and you need to fill a garrison, whatever's getting attacked. You are, if not the most, one of the most critical components for success in KVK, in Osiris League, and, and whatever that looks like. Now, Osiris League, a lot of the top, top tier alliances, they've all got T5. So that's kind of a moot point, but your general normal Osiris League for a normal one to three billion alliance, which is usually the average, I think, at least right now in the game, uh, or below, um, you are critical, absolutely critical to maintaining field positioning with your troops. T5 can win the open field battles outside of those objectives by swarming the rallies or uh, if need be swarming a flag that we're rallying as well. Let the T5 do that. Your only objective from a T4 fighter standpoint is to fill rallies and fill the garrisoning of whatever you're garrisoning, okay? Without you guys, those rallies don't stay up. You are a very critical component to, uh, I know particularly with K-16, our success was on the back of T4 fighters putting their troops on the line, sacrificing themselves alongside of us um, that are T5. It's, it's a, it's a, you have to, you have to be all in. If you want to win the T4s or the secondary, um, you know, second fighters are the ones that really kind of take the game and make it onto your advantage versus your opponent's advantage. Because they're, if they're not the ones that are going to be doing that and you are, you will win because you will have more troops and T4 are really good guys. It's not like T5 is like just you, you immediately drop everything T4. If you get swarmed by you know, a bunch of T4 and you've only got one or two armies of T5 out, you're done. T5s are going to go um, back with sad faces to their city. So T4s are still very powerful, especially if you've got a good amount of tech research uh, in your academy. So I hope that's clear. T4, you're not fodder. I, I've heard that so many times. We're just fodder for T5. That is not correct. You are one of the most critical components if you want your kingdom or your alliance to be successful in battle and war because you need to be the ones alongside of your T5 to actually fill all of these rallies and fill all these objectives when you're defensing different things, okay? So T4 are, if not the most, one of the most critical pieces, T4 fighters in this, in this whole setup here from a battle standpoint. Now, if you don't have T4 and you've got T3 and T2 and, and yet you're in a later kingdom, of course, you haven't gotten there yet. So just kind of make those two recommendations I made fit with what you've got going on. If you've got, you know, if you're in kingdom 450, right, and you've got one T5 in the entire kingdom, and then you've got a bunch of T3 and maybe a few tier four, customize what I just said to the fact that maybe tier three are the ones that need to be filling things and, and all that good stuff. Um, if you've only got a few tier four, those are basically like tier five at that point. If there's only one tier five in the game, um, on your kingdom, uh, that would make a lot more sense for you, I'd imagine. So just kind of take that and run with it. All right. I don't want to leave out my T T3 guys and the newer players that are joining the game because you'll get to the point where we're at, um, at least where I'm at right now. Uh, it just takes some time. I've been playing this game for a year, so you have to get there. It takes a little while, okay? Um, all right, so let me go to the next part. And equally critical, and really it's kind of like a trifecta, right? So, oh man, battles are expensive, uh, especially for tier five, but um, for everybody really, it's, a, it's an expensive endeavor to battle in KBK. And when I say expensive, I mean in-game. It is an expensive endeavor in-game, this stuff. The resources, okay? Resources are at a very, very high premium. That's why everybody that plays this game should have at least one or two farm accounts. If you're really, really into the game and you've got time, as much time as you can spare to create and farm 
as many farm accounts as you can. That's going to be your objective. That's going to help you get as much as you can out of your main, uh, your main city, your main commanders, all that good stuff. You have got to have in your kingdom, and I know that some to some fighters it may sound like they're not doing their part, and they might not be, and I'll get to that later. But you have got to have a contingent of players in your kingdom, and they may even have the secondary accounts is what I'm talking about, but there may be primary players who their only thing in this game, they just enjoy the community, which I cannot fault them for. This is one of the best communities I've ever been a part of in any game that I've played. Um, they just enjoy coming in, chatting with everybody, relaxing, hanging out, and farming. Like That's their thing. They want to farm. They want to get a ton of resources. They want to level up their city in peace. Just let them do their thing and everything's right with the world. That's their, that's their, that's their bliss. <laughs> that's what they like to do. Um, and that's fine. I mean, I'm not, I, there's no bad thing about that. But when it's wartime, okay, we can't necessarily go to those folks and say, hey, spend a bunch of resources battling on the field and, um, you know, throw what troops you've got because you're probably not pounding. If you're just farming and that's it. You're probably not pounding up, pounding through a bunch of speed ups uh, during Mightiest Governor or um, just training troops in general in a in a big way. So you you might have eight or nine hundred thousand t tier four or even just tier three because again tier four is not that important if you're not battling that much. Tier three do just fine against barbarians, guys. <laughs> so um, that might be your situation. If that's a situation you're in and you are part of a committed solid alliance slash kingdom and you are wanting to contribute to the war effort your role is bank your role is bank to your alliance bank to your kingdom bank to your t5 players now there are some tier 4 players that are strong enough to where they can warrant getting resources from from some of those folks but in all reality the tier 5 are the one that generally and again if they're doing it right they're the ones that are taking the brunt of the damage, the brunt of the healing, the brunt of the actual expense outside the game. So you want to support them if you're a gatherer style person where, you're, again, you're here for the community, you're here to have fun, and you're here to farm. If you want to contribute, and you should, to the war effort whenever you're in KVK or whenever you're in a battle inside of your kingdom or whatever situation that looks like, you want to contribute to those types of players. So you want to bank up your food, your wood, your stone, your gold, and then send them via resource assistance to those players so that they can continue to fight on your behalf and win rewards in KVK and win rewards in, you know, whether that's taking zone three and not letting anybody else in or whether that's getting uh, a couple different shrines in your kingdom for your alliance or whatever your, whatever your situation is, that is your role. As a gatherer governor, you want to be financial support you want to be resource support to your main players that are doing the bulk of the battling because i tell you guys no matter how much money you put into this game you will run out of resources you will run out of speed ups you need resources if a t5 player is on the battlefield and in the back of his mind he does not have to worry about resources because he knows that he's got a supportive kingdom or a supportive alliance helping him fight a lot more effective a lot more effective because then all that T5 player has to worry about is speed ups and making sure he doesn't lose too many troops. So that's the critical and again, super critical component because if we don't have that as T5 players or strong T4 fighters, we're going to run out of resources and then we can't fight and then it was all for nothing. So having those gatherers not only understand their role, but more importantly, execute on it is a huge deal. If you're in that position and you're in a major alliance and you're not contributing, that's when somebody can call you, um, you know, just a, a non-contributor or a leech or whatever you want to get called, and they're actually accurate. If you're doing absolutely nothing to contribute to an alliance or a kingdom's success in war, and you're in a war alliance in a war kingdom, you shouldn't be there. Go find an. Uh, I'm just gonna be honest. I mean, go find a kingdom that is more relaxed, less warlike, uh, certainly an alliance that also is that way. And just go find, you know, people that you like as well. And the same, the same principle, enjoy the community, 
Go farm together with your friends and just enjoy the game that way. That's fine. But whenever you have a war kingdom, a war alliance, and you're that player where you've got just nothing but gathering going on, we rely on you. And, and you are a spot in that alliance as, as a, at a premium. Um, we rely on you to help in that way. And if you don't, it's, it's, it's crushing, first off, because we feel like we're fighting for somebody who doesn't want to invest like we do uh, in the game from a time perspective or their heart's not in it. Um, it's a little bit rough. But more importantly, it's just you're taking a spot that somebody else could have that's actually going to contribute. So um, that's why I say that one of that that role is also one of the most critical roles because without you, without gatherers in the kingdom that aren't necessarily warfighters, um, we won't have enough resources to actually do fights for extended periods of time. We need those resources to keep the battle flowing in our direction, um, whether again it's open field or even during rallies or garrison defense. I mean, I know rallies, you tend to have a lot more dead, but with garrison defense, I mean, you do have severely wounded that do need to be uh, healed up. And again, T5 are not cheap, guys. They are not cheap at all, uh, especially in the gold department. Um, gold tends to be, uh, for a heavy, heavy T5 fighter, gold tends to be the resources, the resource that you run out of first. Uh, and until you get to T5, usually you have an overabundance of gold as a T3, T4 player. So while you don't need it right now, and certainly the T5 after wars are over should be compensating the players that have, have given resources when they need those resources back, certainly um, T5 should also, you know, reciprocate <laughs> the... Uh, reciprocate the resource assistance back to their alliance players, back to their kingdom players. Um, but while you don't need that gold right now at tier three, tier four, and you've got 500 million stacked up and your next upgrade is going to cost 3 million gold, um, send that stuff to your T5 players so they can keep fighting. I mean, that's that should be pretty, again, pretty basic, pretty common knowledge. But I've seen it time and time again where we've won battles and we've won fights against alliances, against kingdoms that don't do that or don't do it enough. Whereas we've got a very solid kingdom in K-16 where everybody kind of knows their role. Everybody's kind of slid right in. Of course, there's the exception. There's a few people here and there that are just kind of doing everything for themselves. But for the most part, our kingdom and our alliance, um, you know, set of families with UN and AOC and uh, all the other ones, um, they are very supportive of the kingdom's objectives and they contribute to that fact. So those are the big three. You've got your T5 fighters, which again, should be on the front line with rallies. You got your tier four fighters, which should also be on the front line, but behind the tier five so that they're not taking all the damage and used as assassination uh, type armies. And you wanna bring all five of your armies to one target, guys. Um, Nuke is very good with tier four still. So have full cav, have two or three cav and two or three archers or one infantry to help tank a little bit and two and two with the nuking commanders whatever you can put together from a troop standpoint is what you should be using but the more nuke you have focused on one army that's on the the opposition the quicker it's going to go down the less damage it's going to do and again the better you're doing your role okay there shouldn't really be any more roles from a battle standpoint that i can think of i mean you can also use your, your armies to block space. That's that's helpful, but I don't necessarily think that that's a role for any particular player. You should just do that because that's that's part of the game and that's gameplay. Yeah, I think that's about it. I, you know, if I've missed anything, please please comment in the comments below. Uh, again, if you have not subscribed yet, what are you doing with your life? Go ahead and subscribe uh, and hit the, the bell notification so that you see whenever I put out some new videos. And we are still in KVK, guys. We are still in war. And although we have kind of taken over with our allies, the, the map, and are starting to prepare to come into the King's Land, um, they're still here. They're not gone. So um, there may still be some battles ahead, and certainly with Mightiest Governor coming up next week for us, uh, I would think that there's going to be some more battles to come. I don't necessarily think that there's going to be too many more um, dead troop style engagements for the most part. Maybe a couple that'll come up here and there, but for the most part, I think the bulk of the battles are done uh, for our Lost Kingdom. At least that's the way it seems. Maybe they're lulling us to sleep so that they can break out and go crazy. I don't know. Either way. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I'll go ahead and wrap the video up here. 
this is Dragothian here, and again, uh, I hope you all kind of got something out of this. Uh, again, it's it's supposed to be just some direction. I don't want you all to take anything I just said the wrong way. This is a recommendation based off of successful campaigns that I have been a part of, have led, have just been a part of. Um, you know, those are really my recommendations for what you should do. So I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you all next time. Cheers and take care.